My sister and I are teenagers. We are having our hair braided at the hair salon. My magazine is on my lap because it hurts too much to read. The woman tugging on my hair is Amkorogo, meaning she could only afford enough beauty cream to bleach her hands and face, which are now yellow. Her true ebony persists on the length of her upper arms the bow of her stomach, the breadth of her thighs. I see the West seeing us, and in response, this woman had worked hard to erase the element that marks her as truly African. Her own melanin, her own skin. <laughs> Talking today to Nendo Muki, who is an anim Kenyan animator and filmmaker. Nendo, tell me, what have you been doing over the past five years? Um, I've been working on different um, animated and video projects. I have been working in Nairobi mostly. I've done some advertising campaigns and uh, worked on the No Zone, where I did the animation and the editing. What is the No Zone? It's a kids program that um, used to air on Citizen. Um, Describe your style of animation, because it's not it's not standard 2D animation, is it? My personal style of animation um, is sort of documentary animation mixed media. So I do pixelation, stop motion, um, live action, live action, yeah, and hand drawn animation. And your last um, animated film mm -hmm. was Yellow Fever. What's what's the story behind Yellow Fever? Um, Yellow Fever is a film exploring the way media affects how women see themselves, especially African women and this sort of um, Eurocentric perspective that a lot of the media has and how it affects our self-image. And it deals with differences in skin colour. Mm -hmm. And describe to me how that affects the people in the film? Um, all the people in the film are sort of concerned with skin tone and ideas of beauty and you know there's also the element of having a hair extensions and straightening your hair for the purpose of trying to have a more European appearance so those people who are lighter skinned or have um, less deep shades of skin tone uh, perceived to have an advantage in beauty and social life. And what you were calling earlier is the colour advantage? Yeah, it's called the colour advantage. And what was your own experience as a child in terms of this? Um, there were some times that you were treated very specially, as if you were a cute, small, cuddly doll that was very attractive. And other times that people um, reacted badly towards you because they were somehow jealous of your appearance, so it depended on the situation. Why do you think the lighter skin colour has such um, value in terms of how people see it? Because essentially you interview people in the animation and, and they say some quite staggering things really. Yeah, I think, I think just over time somehow we've come to believe that if you're lighter, especially as a woman, you have an advantage and you're gonna get better jobs. And if you watch uh, TV, for example, I asked one of my friends recently to name one female TV presenter who has um, natural hair, and you couldn't find any. You know, so the if you have extensions, you have straightened your hair, and additionally you're lighter, you're more likely to get these jobs where you're getting a lot of exposure on TV, in the media. And that sends a message to, you know, to children, to women, that these are this is what beauty is. These women are on TV because they're beautiful, and the reason they're beautiful is because they have straightened their hair, and in addition, their skin is lighter. Lighter, yeah. How will this set of attitudes change? Do you think? How will it change? Hmm. I think there needs to be some sort of 
a revolution. The problem is there's a lot of money involved in this. If you tell people to stop straightening their hair, whether someone agrees with it or not, if I own a salon and you tell my clients to stop straightening their hair, I know that my products are not going to be bought. I know that my, my tongs there have got no use. I know that I'm going to have to let some people go because I'm not going to get as much money as before. Um, so even the people who are selling um, skin bleaching products, they might think it's stupid themselves. Then not everyone who sells these things believes in them. However, if um, they know they're going to lose a huge client base if they don't have these skin bleaching products, they're going to keep doing it for the sake of business. So in the end, your appearance is linked to monetary value and that's it. And it sounds as though you're saying it's quite hard to change. Yeah, I, I don't think we're the only people who do these um, sort of harmful practices to ourselves. If you consider the fact that when you're straining your hair with chemicals, the woman who's doing it has got gloves on because she's not meant to get in contact with the chemicals. But you do this every month, some people more often, and you do it to children. If you consider the people who, who bleach them, their skin, uh, some people end up sick in hospital, some of those products have mercury and they won't be sold in the US or in Europe because they, they have banned products in them. However, we are doing these things. Um, at the same time, how many women undergo really strange surgical procedures in the West to approve their appearance? Mm. You know, nose jobs, cheek enhancement, breast enlar enlargement. Mm. You know, there's a lot of stuff people do and it's you're putting your body, you're harming your body, but it's so you look a particular way. And Botox, Botox is, is a terrible thing you're sticking in your face. It's become totally normal for people who can afford it to do it.